Hello everyone. Well, it's been a while since I've discussed any updates I've done on NoTrack. So NoTrack is a network-wide blocking of tracking and advertising websites. So before I get too far in the video, I'm going to have to apologise for any background noise you hear. So it's uh, probably about the hottest couple of days we've had in the United Kingdom. And I've just had to leave the window open. There's no way I can do this video, but I'm hoping this is a pretty good microphone that I've got, so you shouldn't hear too much background noise. Anyway, what I've been working on is porting the remaining bash scripts to Python. So I've got over halfway there, but I've just recently finished off another one for the analytics page. Now this is not analytics in terms of tracking, but rather analytics in analyzing the DNS logs generated by your own server and looking to see if there are any malicious or tracking websites that are accessed. So all analysis is carried out on your own system based on the logs that you have. And it's uh, looking for various combinations of like regular expression combinations. Anyway, this was the bash scripts which are ported across to Python. I don't want to go too much into depth of how the code works, but um, I built it into a class so it could be used in other parts of the code and it links to another module for MariaDB, so the actual uh, commands that are going across to the SQL database on the system. It's looking for various regular expression combinations in the DNS logs, so things like analytics, click, 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 stats, logs, logger, pixel, telemetry, track, tracking, vstats, ads, ad server, adverts. So those are various combinations. Now I think there's probably a few more, but that uh, covers most of the regularly used one. There's also checks for visiting malware sites. It's looking at websites in the block lists which are associated with preventing malware. Yeah, and that just does the searching. I think that's literally that search there. So yeah, it's looking for any domains that appeared within that block list, the specified block list. You know, I know that's a bit vague about how that all works, but uh, what we can see though is the graphical output side. So. This is the list of results from that analytics script. And I've got a few various things here that I was playing around with yesterday. So, oops, that's the main admin page, but the DNS query. So just the log of all websites that are visited yesterday. I've now added a higher risk severity. So the older version of NoTrack just had the green and orange. So like low connection allowed or medium connection blocked, but now we have high malware or tracker accessed. Do a search for that. Performance no track depends very much on the server it is installed on. This is a Raspberry Pi. Oh, which model is it? Um, uh, probably the three something or other, the later ones. I've just forgotten what it is off the top of my head. But yeah, this is a new thing here. So Anything that I've picked up in the analytics script, I go back and change what the result was in the original log file now. So rather than just knowing whether the connection was allowed or blocked, we're now going to highlight what has happened. So tracker accessed or malware accessed. So when you're looking at a screen full of results, it uh, kind of stands out a bit more. Anyway, just a simple little change there. What we can do is prevent those sites from being accessed later on. So if I go to block that website, well, I can either just block it myself on my own system, or I could report it. That's a bit of a boring one to report because that website, I don't, because I'm not sure that website actually exists, but uh, let's go for this one here. Because I wasn't familiar with this one, so if I go to report that website, it sends that domain across to my web server. So I've got a list of sites here that uh, should be reviewed and potentially added to the no track block list. So I don't hold any other information other than that website that was reported. I don't know who reported it and I am happy with that. I don't need to know further information other than if you have a suspicion of a website being of tracking or advertising or malicious, then I will add it to the respective block list. You can put an optional comment, I don't mind, but that's your choice. Oh, and if something was already blocked, and that, don't know why it was blocked here, I possibly uh, paused blocking at that time, so yeah, if I go and report that, then yeah, it's already in the block list, so sorry, it's already there, I don't need to know about it. 
But on the other hand, if you actually wanted to go to the website and you no longer want it to appear in the alerts page, you can go across the config and add it to the whitelist. So yeah, just add that to the whitelist, paste that domain there, save it. Yeah, you won't see it on the analytics page again. Another change which has happened on NoTrack is the ability to use a different web server. So it previously used Lite TPD, uh, now using Nginx. And if you're using the Nginx web server, you've got the option of using a fancier block page. So if I'm looking for something on an internet search engine, what you might find is a website that is known to be tracking blocks, what you're looking for. So great, but, but what if I actually wanted to go there? What if I wanted to have a look? Well, we have a bit more information on this page now. What was being queried? Well, we have a URL in that list and various other parameters. But the thing is, we have an extracted URL, so I could click on it. So I've got the option now of effectively bypassing that block page. It's not perfect at the moment, and this is why you can't just enable it. You have to go and manually install Nginx, uh, swap the web servers over, and install this block page. So I'm just discussing this point at the moment, but when I'm happy with it, I'll do a video on showing how to change it, and future installs will have this enabled by default. And incidentally, new installs have the Python scripts enabled instead of Bash. And what I'm hoping for, if you do the upgrade and have all the dependencies met in Python, that it will switch across from using Bash to Python. Yeah, so I've taken a few gambles and whenever I get around to releasing the well, 0.9.6 release, um, there'll be a lot of things to look forward to. Yeah, begin work on replacing Bash scripts. Yeah, it's only taken me a while to do, but uh, I have to admit I've not been working on it full time. It's been uh, really sporadic at best. But I'll get there. Anyway, that was an update on NoTrack. Well, thanks for watching. See you all later.